This episode of Techno and Buffalo is brought to you by Full Sail University. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo. This is the show where you can ask me, John Brettinger, any question you've got from the wide, wide, wide world of technology. Up this week, we're going to talk a little bit about the next generation Xbox 360. We're going to talk some personal stuff and some Techno Buffalo internals, and we'll wrap it up with another little bit of technology. This is Ask the Buffalo. Let's go and get started. Ramiz Hussein asks, Hey, John, you think there'll be a Connect 2.0? And if so, what specs should it have? Yes, I absolutely think there'll be a Connect 2.0. The Connect has been a huge success for Microsoft. Surely not expect Connect 2.0 to launch alongside the next generation Xbox. We can call it Xbox 3 or Xbox 720, which you're hearing will launch sometime around E3. So the original Connect was actually capable of capturing 720 video, but it was toned way, way, way down. So I expect next generation to be able to capture HD video, and with that, be able to capture more points on the body, making it more accurate. Also, I'd expect much more detailed face tracking, meaning you can track when you're smiling, where your eyes are looking, so perhaps there can be some motion tracking in there as well with your eyes. Actually, I saw when I was at CES, a Chinese company Hire had some awesome eye tracking technology. I would love to see that integrated to Next Generation Connect. I only have a few more months before we know for sure. What do you guys want to see in Next Generation Connect? So the next question has a little bit to do about Techno Buffalo as a whole and the company. It comes from Mark Dalton. Hey John, we look back at the start of TB and how nervy it was in the opening weeks or months, especially when there were server problems on launch causing a delay. How worried were you at the time and where do you see TB going in the future? And it's a really nice segue to something I wanted to talk about. Uh, when we first launched Techno Buffalo, we, I didn't know anything about launching a website uh, at all. We made a ton of mistakes and the servers just couldn't handle even the minimal traffic we were getting because of problems in the code and it completely crashed. Uh, we had to take it down for three months uh, to get it back up before we could go ahead and relaunch the site. There's always a struggle to sort of be, to be, you know, start your own company or to try and grow an organization to be the boss. Everybody wants to get to that position, but few people actually realize the responsibilities that come along with it. Uh, we made an announcement uh, last week that one of our new additions was going to be leaving uh, Techno Buffalo. Of course, I'm talking about Aaron Baker. And uh, there's been a lot of comments in the video that he and I made, and I thought it'd be sort of I guess, professional and uh, respectful to the audience to address it maybe a little bit more. Aaron was most definitely uh, not fired, as surprised as you guys were when he left. I uh, was equally as surprised uh, as us and the, the Techno Buffalo uh, family. Uh, was. Uh, he felt that it was a better fit uh, for him back where he started and we respect it. There's no hard feelings. When I said in the video sometimes things just don't work out, this one of those instances. I still have a lot of respect for Aaron as a person, as a human being, and it's one of those things that just didn't work out. So I respect his wishes to be uh, let out of his contract and go back to uh, where he was before, which evidently is where his heart was. There wasn't anything happening behind the scenes. We didn't get in a fight. There wasn't any sort of head clashing. We still have a lot of respect for each other. Um, and that's really the whole story. There's no sort of weird secret uh, behind it. Uh, he wanted to go back and we uh, let him do that. We want to make a video sort of telling you guys, the audience, uh, that there really wasn't any hard feelings because we both realized that it could seem like there was some crazy stuff going on uh, behind the scenes. That's that's really the whole deal. Um, so when you guys start thinking about you know how you want to either grow up or what you want to do after school or if you're in a business already, uh, how you want to grow and you want to get up, up, up and higher, you know, just remember that sometimes it's not always what things appear. You guys watch our videos, you know, maybe one or two a week, maybe more. But we forget though is this is our lives and this is our job for eight, nine, ten hours a day, and there's a lot of things that go on. Maybe you don't, guys don't realize. I mean, you see a video, all you see is an end product. Uh, what I'd hope that you guys can do is maybe see the work that goes into it, the work that goes into running a company, uh, the work that goes into securing advertisers and paying salaries and getting lighting and equipment. There's a lot to it, and it is a privilege to be able to bring that to you, and a privilege that I love and I cherish. But think of what we do and what goes on behind the scenes as sort of I try to do in my perspective a lot of things that I see. You guys are more than entitled to uh, your opinions. I just wanted to sort of give you guys a bit more information. So hopefully that helps answer a lot of questions. All right, so let's wrap this up and bring it back to technology. 2012 is behind us, and Mark wants to know what your top three Android phones of 2012 would be. It's a great question. 
Number one would be the Galaxy S3, number two, the Galaxy Note 2, and number three would be the Droid DNA that brought 1080p screens to the masses. There were a ton of awesome Android phones that came at you left and right, but those three stood out in really no particular order. So what do you guys think? What three are your favorites, or what three do you think I missed? We we'll take a minute from answering all the questions to thank our friends and sponsors at Full Sail University. You know the mobile app industry is on fire right now. Full Sail University's online mobile development bachelor's degree program can teach you the skill set you need to take advantage of this really quickly emerging opportunity in emerging markets. In this degree, you'll learn both the programming and business sides of mobile development so you can concept, develop, and deploy a market application from start to finish. You'll explore the advanced programming, languages, visual frameworks, usability, principles, and app development elements for iOS and Android. If you're thinking about trying to make an app or you don't know how to do it, this is a great way to go ahead and get started. Through Full Sail's Project Launchbox program, not Lunchbox program, students can receive a MacBook Pro preloaded with industry software plus iOS and Android devices, so kind of cool. Courses are delivered through Full Sail University's immersive online education platform, which maximizes the capabilities of the Mac that you're going to be getting, giving you a learning experience that they're trying to say is unlike any other. Between the App Store and Google's Play Store, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded with really no signs of slowing down. If you're ready to master technology and software to compete in this rapidly growing industry, visit fullsale.edu slash technobuffalo to learn more about this online degree program. Again, fullsale.edu slash technobuffalo. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Ask the Buffalo. Thank you for learning with me and growing with me. And thank you guys for being a part of Techno Buffalo. For now, I'm John Rettinger. I'll see you next video.